<laughs> hello, 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 and welcome back to the Gimme a Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. My name is Dom. That there is Sam. Uh, we are coming at you like Cleopatra with our WrestleMania 40 live review. Uh, 90s, obscure 90s reference, Sam. I saw your eyes. Dot, dot, no, dot, no, I, I got it uh, now. Cleopatra coming at you. No, I get it. Okay, Cleopatra get, coming at you. You're in the music business, I'm not, so I'm going to be a little bit slower uh, with that. I, I wouldn't necessarily, well, 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 certainly not a great, great choice of music, but yeah, anyway, uh, coming at you like Cleopatra, where were, where were we? WrestleMania review, we're going to have some guests in, but it's me and Sam right here with the WrestleMania review. We're going to recap some of the best bits, we're going to recap some other stuff, and we're going to have a little general chit-chat, wrestling theme chit-chat, Sam. It's going to be awesome, it's nice to be back here, right here, and it's lovely to see you, lovely to see uh, you uh, you supporters, you holomaniacs, whether you're with us right now or whether you come back to us later on, let's have an intro and then we'll get on with it. See you in a second. Who are we going to have? Let's do Big E. This is Big E from the New Day. Give me that whole year. Give it to me. I need it. Yeah, Bingy, Bingy, who did who did a fantastic job at various panels over the weekend yes. at, uh, at uh, WWE World, and we're going to actually talk about some of that in a minute as well. Uh, but yeah, Sam, just briefly before we go into it, match by match, uh, how are you feeling? We are uh, we're obviously we we we've, we've we've finished the story. We're uh, we're about to go into a a a particularly potentially exciting Raw after Mania, which would have been awesome if we'd have had that last year. But we didn't. Let's not. I'm not jealous of Andy Spores no, at all for being a wrestler. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. Uh, yeah, it was all worth it. Our anger, our anguish last year was all worth it. So this year, Andy Spores could enjoy an excellent Mania. Not that Mania last year wasn't great. It was great, and we met some lovely people. But but I tell you what, this year, this year, Sam was i thought exceptional as a as a yeah. kind of lapsed fan uh you know coming back into it i was a big big fan of the whole weekend so briefly uh before we bring our guests in as well our esteemed our esteemed our esteemed guest you can tell i haven't done one of these for a while uh yeah. how how are you feeling about uh, everything oh uh vindicated uh a little bit of a tasty dose of schadenfreude which always tastes tasty um it like, it, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it all feels natural. Everything last year makes sense now. Uh, I'm very excited for the future. I've got some bold predictions about how this is not over by a long shot. Oh, um, don't, uh, don't Anthony me, Sam. Come on. No, no, no. I'm not. No, look. And Anthony, if you're watching, hate to say I told you so. All right. Anyone get that Mate. reference? That's, tune, that. That's the hives, yeah. of course. It, it, Who of does course it is. Uh, but I'm going to we'll bring in our guest right now, Scott, because he's waiting patiently. Scott from Rebellious Noise, everyone. I'm going to apologise to him as well. <laughs> Hiya, Scott. You all right? Thank you hey, for the invitations as well this week. And I'm sorry I didn't do it because I'm, because I'm just going to level with you, mate. My, my reason every time was I'm watching wrestling and getting drunk. I'm really sorry. That that, <laughs> that was it. That, that You know, I have nothing better. It wasn't like I was working or I needed my beauty sleep. It was just I had so many shows to get in. And two crates of beer to get through. Um, mm. I'm happy to report that I, I achieved it. So I'm glad, mate. It's yeah. that time of year where it's, you know, go hard on the wrestling and the beer, yeah. it seems. But uh, look, I understand. I understand you're a busy man. I'm just happy to be able to chat wrestling with you tonight as well. Of course, we did course. have Dom on the show on Saturday night. Which night did you come on? It was Sunday uh, night was it? Came on? Yeah, it was, it was last, last night. night? You lose yeah. track this time of year. Don't Andy you? was on last like night too, as well, wasn't he? And it was on as well. So, yeah, real privilege to chat to you, boys. And, uh, yeah, excited to do it again tonight. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, we, we've just asked Sam about his kind of general overview. Uh, before we go into it match by match, uh, we're all going to do a quick review of each match. Uh, what did you think? What is your overall score and impression for WrestleMania 40? Oh, score. I'll hold off on the score for a second so I can talk myself into one because uh, mm. I don't want to overcommit. But... I was saying uh, on, of course, the Rebellious Noise Pro Wrestling channel that the first night was I was underwhelmed by it and it felt like the best case scenario was that it was a preliminary 
tonight too. And, it, and and I do feel for that what that means in future, if they do go with that model, it will start to feel like you're on the kickoff to WrestleMania if you're on night one. And I feel like that's a dangerous territory. Yeah. But as a, as a collective kind of uh, set of shows over this one period, I think it did work well the way they built into it. But I think coming out of night one, I was quite you know, concerned about night two and not too thrilled about some of the stuff we saw on one. But now that we've seen them both and I can take a step back and we're kind of moving into that new era, uh, I can say, you know what, I was I was pretty pleased with the show overall. I was thinking it was going to be the best of the two-night era. I don't think it was the best of the two-night era. Of course, we're only about four or five years into that era at the moment. But, um, I mean, the Cody thing pushes it up, the, the cash in, and, of course, we'll get into these things match by match, as you say. But um, at the moment, I'm, a, I'm on a strong... At, if we're going with a score of 10, I think I'm on a strong 7.5, heading towards Ooh. an 8, depending on how generous I feel. Ooh. Yeah, that's a solid... That is a solid uh, solid score, Scott. A solid so score I'd go full on 9, I think, for me, because I haven't, I haven't given a number yet. I'd go 9, and I'll, I'll defend that in a, in a moment. Uh, I won't need to defend it quite as hard as if, if Ant was here. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I'm giving it a solid... Uh, like he and I will discuss this. I can't wait. Um, yeah. but um, I think Dan and I will be on the same page for a lot of it as we often are. Like, uh, mm, um, mm. even when I try and disagree with Dan, I can't, it's, it's so annoying. Uh, but, yeah, uh, no, he's he's just so chill, isn't he? He's just so yeah, chill. It's, it's, that's right. fine. You do you, Dan and Robin, you're out. It's okay, it's all good. <laughs> uh, it's but fine, yeah, man, it's all, it's all fine, it's all good, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, like I say, great, you know, great two nights. We're going to go go over it match by match uh, and sort of give our thoughts. And obviously everybody, you know, if, if, the, if the comments come in, uh, drop us your thoughts, impressions, grades as well. We normally do that at the end, but we'll give you a bit of time. Yep. If you want to drop your grade in there out of 10, uh, match of the night and performer of the night, please do. Uh, we will go, but we'll start off with... Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. I'll go in with my thoughts first, and then we'll go round the room. Uh, I was impressed mostly with Santos Escobar, not just because he was lovely to us on the media day. People think I'm always biased because he is probably one of the favourite interviews I've done. Uh, but I just think he's a wonderful performer and really coming into his own as a heel. I thought he outshadowed everybody else in this. Even Dom Mysterio, who's obviously done some incredible heel work this year. Uh, the heel team, you know, had the most, uh, you know, kind of about them, I thought, here, even though even in defeat. Uh, Andrade, this is going to be controversial, but I just can't, I can't get into Andrade. I'm not denying his talent, uh, but I, 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 and I understand why they've paired him with Ray. Obviously, again, you can get that rub from a legend like Ray Mysterio, guys. And it was a good win for them at WrestleMania, a great win for for Andrade and Ray. Uh, but for me, that the heels just, you know, looked great even in defeat here. I thought they were fantastic, and like I can say I thought Santos Escobar really shined here. Uh, you know, let's start with Scott, our, our special guest from Rebellious Noise Pro Wrestling, and of course. Uh, do subscribe to Rebellious Noise Pro Wrestling. We'll post some links in the chat for you while Scott responds. Uh, you, what, what are your thoughts on this opening match, uh, Scott? And, uh, you know, your general kind of view on who stood out here? Well, it felt like it probably should have been a stable versus stable match rather than the... Jumped into it anyway. Um, so it was a bit of a a cluster in that sense, but it was entertaining. It was high energy. It's what you expect with these kind of people in the match, right? Uh, I think the big kind of, I don't want to say downer, um, but, you know, the ending was not great, in my opinion, just for kind of, yes, it's a WrestleMania moment. Yes, they're in Philly, but I think it took away from the story. Now, I really do feel like we were leaning towards a Carlito turn, and, and we're probably going to get that this week or something like that. But at the same time, I felt like it was at the detriment of the storyline. So that was my only kind of negative takeaway from it. As far as the the kind of action in the match goes, like say enjoyable, uh, and and you know, Whack and Wild, who doesn't even isn't even in the match officially, gets that incredible springboard move as well. So again, leans more into maybe this should have been a stable versus stable match anyway. Um, if that's the most memorable <laughs> kind of part of it for me. Um your points there about Andrade as well. I do feel like he's kind of been floundering for quite some time. When he came up to the main roster, uh, he was in that stable then with Zelina for a little while. Of course, the pandemic didn't help. Uh, they seemed to change direction on um, 
his character and that and that um, stable very quickly. Uh, then he went to AEW. You thought that'd be his chance. Didn't quite work out there. Now he's come back, and I'm excited to have him back. But it's because of his body of work at NXT. Nothing he's done ever since. So, uh, yeah, little uh, little concern about Andrade myself. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the rub from Rey Mysterio is great, but it can only go so far. You know, Santos, I, I think, has come off the best of everybody in terms of, you know, feuding with Ray, feuding mm. with um, the LWO and having his faction. And of course, mm. Don Mysterio doesn't need any help being a despicable heel. So I certainly take your points there, Scott. And thank you for your viewpoint. Uh, Sam, uh, your thoughts, please, on this match as a, you know, on the whole, what did you think about it? You know, what did you like? What did you hate about uh, Santos <sighs> and, uh, well, what, what, Santos and uh, Dom versus um, Andrade and Ray. See, um, I, I, I liked the match. I thought it was fun. Um, I feel like they're just kind of like grouping all the Lucha doors together into like one, you know, like everyone, for, you know, in, into just one or two groups and then throwing them at each other, which feels a little bit lazy to me. I get they're kind of like trying to do like a CMLL, or AAA within WWE kind of thing. I get that. But I also think there needs to be more storyline than Yay Ray or Boo Ray, which is, mm. which is what it seems to be right now. Um, as far as Mania goes, it was a good spectacle. I agree with every word both of you said. Um, you know, it, it was this was one of the matches that I, I was less bothered about on, on, on night one. Uh, I was happy to see it. Don Mysterio was the main thing for me to enjoy here. Um, I don't think it's over. I think this is building towards a, a rematch between Dom and and Ray. Maybe next WrestleMania, um, if Ray ever you know retires, or and Dom is the one who does it. And um, but I'm that was it really. Like out of all of the matches on the card, this one and you know it is one of the two that did the least for me. But I, I don't think it was bad. It was just all it was up against. It had some stiff competition. Yeah, and I think as as to Scott's point, I think Whacking Wild came off the, the best of out of everybody here. That spot was incredible, yeah. a great feat of athleticism. And, and you know what? A, a, a talent I'd been sleeping on really until you know, until I was like, wow, that this 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 is ace. This, you know, this guy has has real talent. So um, you know, so certainly don't sleep on, on the rest of the LWO just because uh, you know. Ray is Ray and Andrade are at the forefront, you know what I mean? So, so certainly open my eyes to some other talent. Uh, next up, we had Awesome Truth uh, and eight and eight down and down win respective titles for brands. Uh, our Truth uh, getting his first WrestleMania win and a big win for Austin Theory, who doesn't really who was never really liked to push. Uh, but uh, Grayson Waller, certainly, uh, you know, I believe they are continuing to strap, strap the rocket to him. This was full of spots. Um, DIY with a, with a Degeneration X gimmick was particularly fun. Of course, our truth can do no wrong in my eyes. Um, I I loved this. I thought it was a spot best as, as WrestleMania warrants. Uh, I thought it was absolutely the right choice to have. Uh, these teams, you know, those two teams win. Obviously, it was a strong field. Again, you have the no quarter catch crew, which I think is a long name for, for <laughs> Pete John and, and Tyler Bate. Um, you also had, of course, uh, you know, Judgment Day in there. We'll talk a lot about Judgment Day shortly. Uh, but uh, and, and, and DIY, who were, again, my other standout team, um, New Day as well. So, what, what, you know. For me, our truth seeing our truth in that position, seeing him get his mania win, uh, and also seeing the, probably the most despicable heel tag team in Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, the most annoying tag team I've seen in, in a very long time, get those wins. Uh, you know, the the wrestling fan in me would have wanted DIY, but DIY have been really floundering. You know, aside from the DX our truth comedy spots, and and again. Uh, the catch crew. I love as a wrestling fan to see them do, you know, have, have a bigger, you know, uh, result here. But but it's, it feels like the right teams won this, um, lads. Um, that's my thought. 
uh, R-Truth and Miz for the, you know, was was good, brilliant for them, and uh, particularly for Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. You know, they those two young talents are the, the future of the company. So, in my view, anyway. So, uh, let's start with Sam this time, and then go over to Scott. Your thoughts on this, um, on these tag team title? I thought that just quickly, I did actually get confused at first because obviously it was two belts for two different brands. So, yes, yeah. Your 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 thoughts on on the structure of this match and how it went down. Well, I loved it. I, th- I thought having it, it raised the stakes a little bit. Uh, first of all, just to acknowledge uh, Daniel, hello, mate. There, we've been we were having some banter on Facebook earlier tonight. Um, we were saying who would win in a in a whole year four way corner. You know, give you a whole year match. I, I arrogantly said me, and then I realised it would probably be Dan. Um, he said he's he's not too happy. Um, it's always the quiet. It's always the quiet ones. It's yeah, or, quiet you know. Um, then Mark is saying big respect to Dan Hargreaves for doing two streams back to back and then Raw tonight. The guy, oh man, no amount of caffeine could get me to do that. I, like, like that is insane. Like the guy is is a is a soldier. Um, Dan said Don would win. <laughs> I haven't seen this. He really. Uh, Daniel saying I can't believe Cody won the title last night. Oh mate, we'll we'll get onto it. I know he's not happy. He's, he's he's one of one of Anthony's <laughs> boys. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. So I, with this one. I, can't, I, I really, really liked it. Now, I was dead against the idea of me, the awesome truth winning both belts and being the undisputed champs. But because they split the belts, I, I, I became more for it. I thought, well, okay, one set of belts is all right, as long as the other set of belts go to a little bit more of a, a more serious team. Now, what I did enjoy about this is we saw the heels, uh, so the babyface teams at one point, having a little team up, because they were like, well, hang on a minute. We can get them and you can get them. Let's work together. <laughs> and that was really, really smart. Babyface is being smart for once. It, 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 it's brilliant. Um, but then as soon as uh, A-Town Down Under got the other set of belts, all those alliances fell away again. And I thought that was really good, really smart in like in ring booking and all of that. Uh, I'm happy with A-Town Down uh, being the champs for SmackDown Um because we can see a babyface team do a good chase. I think it is their time. I want to see them crowing on SmackDown and being like, nah, 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 and eventually one turn on the other, which is inevitably where it's going to go. So I love this. There were some great spots. JD McDonough coming out and, and, and paying for it was, was brilliant as well. Yeah. I, this really got, like, me and Jess were jumping up and down for this. This really got us into it. We loved it. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, again, JD McDonough has been great. Uh, you know, been yeah. been great in his role uh, for the Judgment Day, and, and and hats off to JD McDonough for making it, the most of his time on the main roster. Uh, Scott, your thoughts on this? Was it a, was it a was it too much of a spot fest for you, or did you love it? Did you hate it? Uh, mate, I love a spot fest. I'm uh, pretty much echoing uh, both of your thoughts on this one as well. I think it was a great kind of um you know we always talk about the money in the banks and the multi-man ic matches as well over the years and and i i feel like mania misses that when it doesn't have it so this was great to get that kind of back in that form a little bit different with 12 people in the match uh, mind you but still really entertaining some great spots here and there and like uh, Sam was saying there, really refreshing to see the baby faces do that spot. I mean, we've never had that spot before anyway, because we've never been in position mm. with the two titles on either side. But even if we did, as you say, usually it would be the heels that do something like that. And, and then yeah. business, you know, picked up, as Jim Ross would like to say, once those first titles are claimed as well. So that really did change the dynamic of the match. Um, as far as the winners go, I think both, I'm happy with both of them. I just think they're they're better for the teams than they are for the titles, which I guess is somewhat what it's all about. The belt Mm. is there, you know, not to use that word prop to help someone get over, so to speak. So you could argue that, but at the same time, I feel like the tag division for years is, you know, we all know what it's been like up and down, up and down. I feel like two teams that won't last very long, in my opinion, is a bit of a risky move to split them for them. I feel like bait and done who you could argue is the same. Um, I feel like, they maybe would have been better off with the SmackDown titles. And the awesome truth would have been the feel-good thing. But as you said, Don, we've kind of got the either side of the spectrum here with the super baby faces getting one and the, the big bad heels getting one set as well. So it kind of works yeah. in that way. And I'm a fan of A-Town Downlander as well. I've got to be honest. It's just yeah. I'm not sure how long uh, we've got with uh, with that team. Yeah, and I think, again, they've been talking about turning Austin Theory face for a long time, and I'm assuming that's how they're going to do it. Mm. Our truth, I, it was his time. You know, what is he now? I mean, I mean, he looks about 
20, you know, he looks about maybe 35, 40. The guy doesn't from, age. I don't yeah. know what he's it, got, it, it, what he like, he's doing. It, yeah, he need like 50 or something. I mean, I mean, you know, it's incredible for him to have that moment and, you know, hats off to our truth, of course, and, and, and all the teams involved there. Like you say, it'd be interesting to see, particularly on the SmackDown side, how, you know, who chases them now. I think Peyton mm. Dunn would be the perfect chaser for um for a town down under uh who you know and, and how long awesome truth last because it didn't you know that the are we you know we are obviously to to remember if i remember correctly miz turned on truth so yeah, uh, mm. yeah so i think we'll, we'll have to see what happens there but I, I get your point i just want to shout out eric ross for saying he saw the solar eclipse you can Ooh. see that in various parts of the world right now. Uh, nowhere near us, unfortunately, in the UK. Um, there are parts of the UK where you can see it. Uh, but congratulations on catching it, Eric. I'm glad you got to see it. And thank you for joining us as well. As we uh, move on to a match that actually came before all this, uh, I've, I've mixed up the... Uh, I'd like to say I mixed it up to keep us on our toes but i mixed it up because i put the order wrong in the uh on, on the on the back end hey of... brother come on don't don't Indeed. admit it uh rhea ripley defeating <laughs> becky lynch uh for the w women's world championship this really solidified rhea for me as a a world beater as a legend a future hall of famer having the wrestlemania win for rhea is obviously a huge huge deal um you know, uh, against Becky Lynch, you know, almost like a passing of the torch, if you will. I know Becky's not, uh, you know, not done yet by any stretch of the imagination, but Rhea is certainly the biggest star WWE has, I think, on the women's side of things um, and has been giving some great um, sort of interviews and press over the years and has always been reliable for WWE in that sphere. So, um, you know, just felt like a right choice. There was, I, I don't think there was any other result. Uh, I don't think anybody would have even considered another result for this. Rhea is, uh, you know, an exceptional talent and will carry the women's roster along with some other people who we'll talk about in the next few uh, minutes, um, you know, for the next, you know, two, three, four, five plus years. You know, Rhea Ripley is a, a world beater, as I said, and I think the, jo the Judgment Day dynamic is fantastic. Uh, just her dynamic... Uh, the top of the card is is, is great and, and well deserved. Um, I I thought this result was um, was academic. You know that this is, you know I, I would have I, I would have even bet I, I would have even bet Roman to beat Cody before I would have bet Rhea Ripley to lose to Becky Lynch. You know I think it was that uh, much of a, a dead set for me personally, lads. Um, let's go with Sam um, and then Scott on this one. Uh, See, I no, I wasn't one. sure. Um, because because I didn't know if they were going to do that with Becky's book being out and, and all of that, and with Seth more than likely losing, um, I I wasn't so sure. But then I realised, well, they've both had their big coronations at previous manias. It's so there's no obvious winner here other than the fact that who's who's got to be the, the hottest commodity as the t the champ for a while longer. Um, as you say, Dom, that is Rhea right now. Now, I do wonder what they're going to go and do with Becky um, because she's she's still a, to a top star as well. Like, you know, this was not a job her match. Um, and it wasn't like it, she needed like the victory like she needed against Charlotte last year. This wasn't the big coming out moment. This, this was her defending. But I think a successful retention a year later really puts her on the, uh, you know, elevates her even higher. Um, for, for, for me, so happy with the result. Uh, looking forward to seeing where they go now. I just hope they do something good with Becky as well. They don't squander what they've got there, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, we'll see what they do with Becky going forward. Uh, Scott, your thoughts on this one, please? Yeah, kind of again, echo both of you, really. Right decision for me. Uh, I think your, your kind of claim there, Dom, that you know, getting into legendary status is, is a big one, but. It's hard to argue, even though she's young and even though she's still got plenty more to do and give, I'm sure. Um, if she retired today, it's one of those that in 15 years time, you'd be saying Hall of Fame, right? So it is what it is. So, I mean, I think she's done fantastic. Of course, on the other side of the ring, you've got someone even more so deserving of that title, of course, with Becky Lynch. But, you know, I'm happy to see her kind of elevate Rhea. And it feels like there's been quite a bit of this uh, passing of the torch type feeling around the whole horsewomen. Uh, you know, Bailey, I think, I think referred to it as well on her press conference after uh, Mania. So, um, yeah, although, yeah, Rhea is established. And as Sam said, it was about kind of 
solidifying that range she kind of picked up a year ago, uh, I still think it was important to do for uh, for her character and, and even for that title as well. I know it's the same, technically same one she, she did win a year ago, but it's got a new name, it's got a new design. It's still kind of fresh in that sense. So it is important to kind of have that recognizable moment. Uh, and I think, you know, yes, Becky Lynch would give it kind of, as well so to speak but Rhea Ripley holding on to it I think at the moment is the right decision the, yeah the right decision and again you know I think the win over Becky again solidifies uh, Rhea at the top of that card uh, before we move on to Jey Uso uh, defeating Jimmy uh, I all, I want to come back to the comment there uh, from Eric uh, congratulations to Cody Rowan I'm so glad he finished the story do you all think the bloodline splits up because I heard Roman may take time off I heard Paul Heyman may retire what are your thoughts um, for me on this one Eric I think the bloodline will carry on in some form they did it with Rome without Roman for a while. They they can mm. do that. I think they might go on to other things. Uh, obviously, in terms of them, you know, not necessarily a title chase against Cody uh, right now. Or may, maybe maybe initially. I think there's obviously um, Jacob Fatu is rumored to have signed. I, I, I think it's still rumored. I think he's confirmed it to people, but WWE haven't. Jacob Fatu. If anybody's watched MLW, I think I talked about it on Reb Noise uh, last night. Um, I think he's the most most athletic member of the bloodline in its current form. And I say that with no disrespect to Solo Sokoa or to um, Jimmy Uso. Um, certainly the most dynamic. You wouldn't necessarily think about it in terms of body type or whatever, but he is the most dynamic performer. And I think he will shine beyond the bloodline in future years. And I'm so glad that, that an MLW guy is getting the chance to shine on an even bigger stage because I really do love MLW and I'm a big fan of Jacob Fatu. Reminds me a lot of um, Umaga, you know, mm. but but even more agile and, and, and sort of... Um, creative perhaps in terms of moveset uh so i'm very excited about that um just quickly let's go around the room on this because i think it's an interesting talking point a excellent question thank you again eric for that let's go with scott this time on this one bloodline breaking up mate uh, i don't know i don't think so i think now there's definitely legs in for, for, you know it continuing you know maybe with a rock taking charge and roman even if he does go away what a perfect opportunity to bring him back as the baby face going against big bad rock you know it was mentioned again on the stream last night that maybe that's where we go with it because of course going into many it looked like the rock could be turning that's the way rock turns back to baby face that's how we get the one-on-one -on -one. but maybe they continue with this heel dynamic for the rock and they change roman back to the baby face instead and we do get new members and it could be almost like uh you know uh Raw of the Mania classic moment when D Generation X gets a you know new member in, in X Puck coming over by the new uh, leader of the gang at the time, Triple H. It could be a similar kind of situation, who knows, uh, later on tonight or in the coming weeks as well. So I do think there are legs in the bloodline continuing, which I'm glad to say because the past year has not been as good as the year before. And at times I've been thinking, I oh, just just finish it, but there is a new kind of uh, level they can get to. Now that they didn't do the same old thing last night and Jacob Fatu yeah. arrived and did the old Samoan spike, just like Solo did the same year, uh, same the year before, now I'm open to it. Now that we've got the Cody thing out of the way, I'm open to new stories for the bloodline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd be very surprised if we get The Rock um, week in, week out, you know, going forward. So I think the bloodline, it would be interesting if we, if we do get what you're talking about and The Rock leads the, the bloodline. You know, I, I was under the impression, certainly, that The Rock would be the baby face heading into that feud. Uh, but uh, but we'll have to see again, you know, um, anything is possible in WWE, as they say. Sam, uh, bloodline finishing up for you, or what are your thoughts? No. Uh, well, the, the Rock now sets no. in and we, have, and we have a civil war. Uh, we, we now get the moment where Roman is on his own, um, but now we need to, the, but the story there isn't over. We, we, we now we need to get to the point where he is the head of an empty table, the chief of, without a tribe. We, we need to get to that point. Um, I do think he's going to end up that, that match with The Rock is going to happen potentially at SummerSlam. Like, yeah, we're not going to see The Rock every week, but I, I don't think they're done. I do think The Rock is going to send Jacob for two after him. That's going to be what it is. I think that, like, I've, I've fantasy booked this many a time to anyone who watches the stream. I think Fatu is going to come in and be like, you weren't my tribal chief. I never acknowledged you. I'm tribal chief now. You haven't got a belt. And, and that's the fight we have. But I also think we're going to now see a feud over the title of tribal chief, but without the belt. Because that's still a thing they can mm. put on the line. It's... Um, 
they, they can still squeeze a lot of good storytelling out of that. But before that all kicks off, there is one more thing that needs to happen, and that is they make Cody Roman a trilogy. Now, I'm not talking SummerSlam, WrestleMania. I'm talking get it out of the way pretty quick, potentially in a hell at a cell at one of the current upcoming pay-per-views, and I'll tell you for why, as they say in Gavin and Stacey, because we've had the big blockbuster match that didn't go the way we wanted to where the bad guy won. Last night, we had the happy Hollywood ending with everybody involved, the big schmoz. Now we need something a little bit more serious. We need the two of them together having a proper fight without any run-ins, any BS, and a definitive win from Cody over Roman, finishing this once and for all. Uh, because Roman is now going to start singing about, oh, you had him involved, you had him involved. Da, da, da. The hypocrisy and the delusion is now going to come out. You know, Roman is going to conveniently forget that he's been doing that for two years. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, Cody right now isn't the undisputed champion, as far as I'm concerned. There's a dispute there. So we need a hell in a cell. End that story. Roman needs to be battered, weak, bruised at the end of it skulk away and that's when solo starts doubting him um and that's when we start seeing the these issues arise but i think the bloodline will be dead sometime soon but i don't i think there's there's another now a story a really good story they can tell and I, we'll get to the usos and how they factor in when we get to their match which is which is up next. Excellent segue. Uh, Jey Uso defeating Jimmy Uso. I think a lot of people said, and we've had a couple of comments, that it was the most disappointing, uh, quote-unquote, match on the card. Mm. Um, for me, personally, lads, I I don't know how else they could have done it. Uh, I will, I'll will i bring the Usos in on, on screen here because Jay is clearly the Shawn Michaels of this pair. And I think it's too often the case where one brother out challenges the other so completely Jeff and Matt are another example. That's not to say that J uh, Jimmy can't have a solid career in the same way that Matt did in the same way Marty Giannetti did um, before. Uh, but, but I, I don't see any way and, and this match didn't do anything to dissuade my theory and no, of course, discredit to J uh, Jimmy as an incredible talent. I don't see any way that, that Jay, that um, Jimmy will eclipse Jay anytime soon. It was a clear and definite Jay is the star. He is the guy we're strapping the rocket to. Uh, the match itself was was okay. I mean, super kicks galore for everybody that rips into the Young Bucks. And I you know, don't have a lot of time for AEW at the moment. But uh, for everyone that rips into the Young Bucks and their super kick vest, this was uh, a prime example of... Uh, of what WWE would call that, this was this was definitely uh, definitely a few too many super kicks in my view, uh, but that is again the Usos thing. Um, Jimmy came off weaker here. I don't know how he recovers from this, aside from being somebody's lackey in the bloodline. If it's not going to be Romans, then it's going to be the Rock, and if it's not going to be the Rock, it could be it could be Jacob Batu from the word go. Uh, J Jimmy doesn't look like a star in the way that Jay does. And that is my thought. And I don't think to be readed anything to dissuade that theory uh, from my perspective, lads. Um, Jey Uso with the clear win here in a OK match, but nothing but nothing compared to, you know, Matt and Jeff, say, for example, in terms of what they did uh, in their matches. Um, this was OK for me. Uh, let's start with Scott on this one. Your thoughts on Jay defeating Jimmy here? Uh, well, I almost went into the old, uh, they've seen the, the, the meme from Jose Mourinho of, you know, if I speak, I'm in trouble. I prefer not to speak type thing because I don't want to just kind of come on here and talk bad about these guys who I have a lot of respect for. You know, they are definitely one of the best tag teams of all time. And I'm really excited by, you know, where both of them can go. As you say, Jay's been the one that's had the rocket strapped to him, but I felt like last night was the opportunity to maybe counteract that by giving it to Jimmy. But at the same time, I was like, you know what, long term. Jay's the one selling merch. He's probably could go on and win and probably should win. But there was that part of me thinking maybe Jimmy should to uh, to kind of get something. You know, he's 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 took a noble role. I think he's aware, you know, like as the heel, he's he ain't gonna sell as many t-shirts and make as much money in that sense either. So I think he kind of as as kind of 
I guess, you know, perform to the best of his abilities still, even though it's been a bit confusing at times when it comes to their kind of dynamic and relationship they've had for the past, you know, year. I mentioned it a few times this week, you know, one minute they, one turns on the other, then the other one turns on the other, then the other one turns. It was confusing all the way along. And I think that didn't help the build to this match. And then the match itself, the only thing I thought could save it was uh, a really good performance. And sadly, it weren't that. I think OK is, is a very fair uh, assessment from you, Dom. So I'm, I'm going to stick with it was OK and kind of uh, leave it at that. You're on mute, mate. OK, that's what I was trying to say there. <laughs> uh, I, 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 um, I, yeah, I think for me and the reason I put myself on mute there is I wanted to allow you the time to get your thoughts out there because I thought it was a much more articulate version of, of what I was trying to say, Scott. Um, as, is, as is usually the case, you are much no. more articulate. Uh, I, you know, I think you're right. I, I'll be, I'm particular, I am fascinated to see if, Jim, if Jimmy breaks the cycle. You know, mm. why, why can't two brothers be on equal footing? But, but, you know, we've never had, I don't think we've ever had it before. You know, I'm not saying that, uh, I think my first one was Shawn Michaels, of course, Shawn Michaels and Matt Giannetti weren't brothers. Uh, mm. Owen and Brett. Actually, no, you know what? Uh, maybe Owen could have been what Brett was, you know, further down yeah. the line. I think that's the best example of what an equal footing looks like. Because your other example, of course, and this is not to take away from Matt Hardy, who, by the way, is a free agent as of yesterday. Um you know, nothing to take away from Matt Hardy, but Jeff was always the star. And it does feel a bit like we're getting that again, yeah. where where Jimmy will have the mid-card, solid mid-card career, maybe break into the main event for a couple of matches, you know, here and there. But Jay is the, you know, his main event, Jay Uso, it's in the name. So be particularly interested to see how they book Jimmy going forward, because I think Jay is OK. Um, Sam, have you had your viewpoint on this? Let's see what you've got to say. Yeah, see, I would have liked a little bit more storyline here because let's not forget, uh, Jay, you know, Jimmy had to worm his back his way back in with Roman after he turned on Jay and then was rejected by both teams. And let's also not forget that Roman was like, "We don't really want Jimmy, Jay. We want you. You know, get rid of your twin brother and come back into the mm. fold." So I personally now want to see Roman take out his frustration on Jimmy. Um, and and then Jimmy to kind of turn face. I can't, I would have I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. What have I done? A little bit more. I've gone so far now. I, I can't go back. But mm. uh, you know, some regret from because we saw that moment where he said, "I'm sorry, you were right." But he was always playing possum when he when he did that. So I, I would like now to see some redemption for Jimmy. And he's also never had his time to truly shine like Jay has. So let's give him that. Let, let's mm. now have a feud between Roman and, and Jimmy, where, where Jimmy gets to be, you know what, I, I, I've had enough of you. Because let's also not forget, he was the one who first super kicked Roman. He was the one who broke away first. He had had enough. So let's, let's lean into that. Let's see that without a belt, without that. Let's just see these two cousins have this blood feud. Uh, in this civil war, this bloodline civil war, which I suspect we're heading towards now, and I can't wait for it. Um, because without the belt, what is the bloodline? But the Usos are still important, but important part of it. So I, I, yeah, like Jay is obviously the big baby face. He's the big star. I, I do genuinely think they they are going to reunify and be the Usos again. And when they do, it'll be a big pop. It'll be a big moment. Um, but yeah, like like they. But it's not. I'm not giving up on Jimmy yet. Like, even if he doesn't get to the same levels of stardom as Jay, uh, it doesn't mean he's he's not doing he's he's doing exactly what he should have been doing all along. In, in, like, I know they fell apart a bit with him flip flopping. Uh, I agree that is what killed the momentum of this story, and that and the lack of Sami Zayn being involved in it this year. Mm. Um, but but I'm actually quite positive as to what happens now with Jimmy, because I think all the eyes are on him, because Jay's now away. Jay doesn't need them anymore. Doesn't need to get involved until they suck him back in. Right now, all my eyes are on Jimmy and what happens next, so I'm very excited. But yeah, the match was a little bit disappointing for me, because it didn't have the emotion I wanted. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, and I, I can understand that based on, again, what we've talked about with some of those previous brother versus brother matches, but also, yeah, you know, again, We'll, we'll see. This Bloodline Civil War thing that you've got, Sam, is a great idea in principle, but I, I'm i not entirely sure Roman's not taking time off and going to Hollywood, so we'll have to see. A word happens. on the street 
is that's exactly what he's going to do, but not yet. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm hearing that SummerSlam between him and The Rock is, is almost a dead cert, but there's a lot of ground to cover between now and then, and we might not have uh, The Rock for that, but apparently we are going to have Roman. He's not just going to skulk away. Um, again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, I certainly think Roman is going to start reducing his schedule even more, and we might see less of him, but there's still things for him to do. Um, I think a rematch with Cody... A match against the rock uh a, a part of that but we'll see okay okay well let's look at that uh zacharias popped in with a comment uh will we get rock roman solo versus cody Cena or undertaker uh no but it's a no. great match for your 2k dream matches uh, Zachary, <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh you know that that's a lot of money for wb to spend and even though they're making billions at the moment uh you know i, I think undertaker's uh undertaker and cena particularly taker have uh, their uh rest time um and obviously we, we'll talk about why we think that undertaker Cena, etc showed up on night two uh, in a minute uh are we going to get nxt corpse tonight i hope so um brom break has just come up uh you know we'll, we'll talk in fact we'll maybe come back to that one uh the conclusion of our review um because it'd be nice to see certain people get called up but i'm not entirely sure who you would bring up it's a good question maybe Carmelo maybe think Hayes. Carme oh, well, yeah, 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 there you go. Well, that's the guy, isn't it? It's Carmelo Hayes. You bring up Carmelo Hayes. Uh, Trick Williams is is another fantastic example of, of a great star. So Carmelo and Trick would be great. Uh, I think there, there Trick's are, got more to do, go up, go up against the champ, do something, you know what I mean? There, there I was Carmelo's the, done in, in NXT. Person, that's yeah, just a person. There were a couple of work that Trick uh, comments at WrestleMania, yes. which which could be hints, but uh, we'll have to uh, see. We'll have, we'll have to see. Uh, but certainly I agree with you on Carmelo. Uh, Scott, while, while, we're, while we're on it, um, not to deviate too much, are you, any uh, NXT call-ups tonight? Uh, yeah, probably just the ones you said. I think Carmelo Hayes is the one that's most likely for me. Um, I still haven't got around to watching Stand and Deliver, but I have heard good things about it, and I'm glad to say that uh, the buzz seems to be coming back for NXT. So it would be good to see some of these guys transition across to the main roster. Um, and I think top of the list is is Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I like that. I think Carmelo can do some incredible work. Let's get back to the WrestleMania portion. We will get to some comments at the end. We're going to go Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi defeating Damage Control. Damage Control not having the best WrestleMania this year. Um, I have only highlighted one um, image for this one, and it is Jade Cargill. Uh, I thought Jade had an exceptional showing uh, on this. Uh, now, it was nice to see Naomi in a prominent spot uh, after a great run in TNA. Of course, Sam, I, I know you got to speak to Naomi as part of that. Uh, mm. Bianca Belair, of course, should always be in a prominent spot of WrestleMania. Yep. Uh, damage Control, I don't know what's next for them. I think Dakota Kai is fantastic, uh, but I, I, I don't know how they're going to bounce back. I'm sure they will. Of course, each member of Damage Control is uh, a main eventer in their own right. Uh, but this seems like the right call, particularly to showcase one uh, Jade Cargill, the storm, as it were. Uh, love the attire, love the love the presentation, love it all. I think Jade Cargill is the, the the you know, as much as I pedestal Rhea Ripley and will continue to do so, uh, Jade Cargill is your next, your next big star, I think, at the moment. And uh, obviously Becky Lynch can, can, can round out that three, but I think Jade Cargill... Um, is a bigger star than Becky Lynch at the moment. And the only person to eclipse uh, Jade is, is, is Rhea at this time. Um, so, so yeah, uh, right call, even at the expense of damage control, lads. Um, start with Scott on this one. Um, Jade Cargill, again, uh, what do you think of her dominant showing? Um, you know, is there a ceiling to this? Because, again, you know, who can beat, you know, is Jade Cargill the new Goldberg? You know what I mean? Can, can anybody... Uh, tackle Jay Cargill and and, and, and and knock her down uh, because this was a, a, a great showing of um, strength um, and just you know great a great showing for the performer. So what do you think, Scott? Yeah, one hundred percent. I couldn't help but be reminded last night that this superstar, if you will, was built by the rival. 
and um, mm-hmm. they let her go. And, and you know, we're not here to kind of go which company's better because I do, as you said, Dom, earlier, I do think AEW had some great times. And at the moment, I'm not massively into what they're doing and more on this side. So I understand why Jade has taken that decision. But at the same time, it's wild, right? It's wild. They built this incredible star. And yes, the whole comments about, you know, she's still green and she's still new and she's still got to do this and she's been protected by this, this and this and she's coming. Yes, that's all very much true, but they could both be true at the same time. You can see the potential in Jade as a superstar. And I keep using that word. I know it's the cliche term for WWE wrestlers, but if you take her outside of wrestling, I think you'd be going something special about this woman, you know? So um, really happy to see her. I mean, this, you know, this match was exactly what it needs to be with you a little bit concerned about damage control not sure where they go and they are again main eventers in their own right individually so maybe that's what they do and kind of sprinkle off and do their own things um but as far as the uh, the other side the babyface team i think it was a good showing for them yes i was hoping for a jade turn straight away i have to be honest and that was part of my uh dampening kind of uh, experience of wrestlemania night one overall that we didn't get things like that but all in all, like it was good. And I know it's coming. Like we all know it's coming, right? And then when it does come, it's going to be incredible. Uh, I just selfishly wanted it last night. But yeah, overall, really good. And I think they're they're being wise with Jade. The only thing I would say is I was very shocked it took them until like six days before Mania to go, oh, she's got a match, by the way. Like it, it felt like they really didn't know what they wanted to do. But then all along, surely Bianca would have had some sort of match because she's on this incredible streak as they're kind of promoting now as well at WrestleMania. So um, surely uh, they were holding off because they always had the plan. But it, yeah, they were kind of fine with that one. But hey, we got what we got and it was still pretty good. It was. It was pretty good. And, uh, you know, excellent points. You're right. You know, the future's looking bright for particularly a potential, you know, Bianca Belair and and, and Jade uh, Cargill showdown uh, down the line. That is a mouthwatering uh, prospect for a match and uh, and obviously some other dream feuds as well but yeah you're right maybe they could have built something a little quicker for their you know one of their biggest acquisitions in the last mm. decade in, in, in jade cargill going into mania uh you know as big a deal as of course wrestlemania is uh sam your thoughts then on this one see i'm not worried about damage control in the slightest they, they've still got the belts and they can still be heels who crow about having the belts uh, in an episode of tv so this was just three baby faces who, who were kind of, I kind of think, shoehorned together a little bit. So each one had something to do. And lo and behold, we've got a, th- a trio of heels here. Let's bung them together. Gr- good match. Great entrance. Good showing for everybody involved. Nice to get Cargill on the card as well and everybody else. Um, but I ultimately think this match means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and I, right. No, I really do. It, no, it was fun. Uh, but I think all three of the baby faces are going to go on do on do their their own thing. I, I'm fairly sure we're getting, like Scott said, we're getting Bianca versus Cargill at some point because we need to see that. But I think they got the the baby faces and the heels go their separate way. The heels are now going to be busy going after Bailey and defending their belts and mm. and back to tag team and stuff. Like, like all, to me, this was just a mania match to have a place on the card for me at least. Okay, okay, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's um, Scott's got to jump off in a few minutes, so we're going to get your thoughts uh, very quickly on this one because you and I had the same thoughts, and it's not going to be it's not going to be um, what most people want to hear, perhaps. Um, so yeah. I want I want to start with you, Scott, on this one because I think your viewpoint is a controversial one. Um, you know, we share it. Mm. Sami Zayn beating Gunther here um let's 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 get into it why why did this not work for you scott i mean the two glaring issues are that Sami Zayn getting this moment is fantastic but it should have been for a world title number one uh the other side of the coin is that gunther losing the title should have been to someone brand new and deserving of that kind of mid card opportunity which is surely Gable and of course it looks like there's some sort of storyline coming up between the two of them soon and you know Raw tonight could change everything but still um, I just I didn't like the fact that I was watching what was presented as this incredible moment and I didn't feel I don't want to say nothing but I didn't feel much and I know they've hyped up Samantha's uh, call and of course that would continue and be even bigger on night two but I felt like I wasn't I felt bad like I weren't invited to this party where everybody seemed happy about it and I wasn't, you know, and it was 
again, I love Sami Zayn. I think he's he's fantastic, but that's why I'm not happy about it because this is him becoming the IC champ for the fourth time. Uh, uh, yes, you could argue Gump has made that a title that it wasn't when Sami mm. last held it, even though Sami had a good run with it, the double champ thing and all that. Um, still, Sami... Sammy's um, prize for his incredible run and helping this new era be ushered in should have been the world title. And last mm -hmm. year, it felt like he got a second prize in the form of a tag title, but we all accepted it because we understood what was going on with Cody. Then that didn't happen anyway. And we thought, you know what? Him and KO is a nice little touch and the Usos. It was, it was nice. This year, I was hoping for more for him. Yes, he got his individual moment, but it weren't what I wanted it to be. And yeah, don't get me wrong. It was a shock when that hit. You know, Matt uh, kind of felt the uh, the presence of the referee's hand for the third time. But I'll be honest, I weren't feeling it. And uh, I think it could have been so much more if it was Gable. And and I think they know that. So I'm, I'm very shocked as to why yeah. they didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I suppose the argument is, as, uh, as Kaiwan uh, says in the comments, you know, you can you can have a believable feud where, where Chad could beat Sammy, whereas that hasn't necessarily been the case with Gunther. So I suppose there is an interesting point there, Scott, uh, mm. to to address. But, um, you know, where w before you go, because a lot of people are saying, well, Gunther naturally goes into the world title picture. Yeah. But to lose? Well, where, 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 where oh, yeah. Scott, where, where does Gunther go here? Because he can't beat Cody. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, oh, go on. it's a tough one. It's a tough one because I was saying last night on the stream as well on our channel that like we've only known Gunther as a champ since he's been in WWE. Like he had the NXT UK title for ages. He's had this title for ages. So it's going to be weird not seeing that. And I do think, you know, Berlin coming up, of course, have to always caveat it. he's not German, he's Austrian, but spent a lot of time there and kind of cut his teeth there as well. But when it comes to his, his wrestling skills. But at the same time, I think maybe this has got an opportunity to kind of put him in a high profile role where he doesn't have a title which will feel alien to us at first, but will be distracted by the fact he's in Berlin, which will feel like the championship around his waist or that he's going after. You know, it will be kind of uh, an opportunity to kind of distract us from him not having a belt. And then we can spread it out a little bit further. And maybe he could be Cody, at, you know, SummerSlam or a few months after that or go after the World Heavyweight. It'd be interesting to see. But yeah, great points there. Um, and and I do think that the positive here, like it was always going to be when he lost the title, was that it frees him up to go to that next level, which I think he belongs in. So, absolutely, uh, yeah, really good. Absolutely. Okay, Scott. Well, we'll let you go because I know you've got a stream coming up over on your channel. Uh, so before you before you leave us, you massive legend. Uh, thank you for your time. First off, but where can people find you? Is there anything that you'd like to plug and promote before you leave us? Yeah, so yeah, once again, guys, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to chat wrestling with you guys, whether it's here on my channel, Reddit Snows Pro Wrestling, or Wrestling Royalty, of course. I know this is the simulcast these days, like Rural and Nitro was on that special night in March 2001. But <laughs> where you can find me, generally speaking, will be the Rebellious Noise Pro Wrestling channel at R-E-B-N-O-I-S-E -E for all Rebellious Noise stuff on social media and at RN Pro Wrestling specifically for our wrestling content as well. Uh, yeah, I'm going live very soon, guys, and I'm not trying to steal your viewers or anything like that, so I won't plug myself too much there. But basically, once the stream ends, I'll say it that way. Come and join me when these boys have wrapped this one up, if you don't mind. I'm going to be going live uh, very soon up until basically Raw is kicking off. We're doing our build-up show which we usually have for our big PLEs. We will say it's the way to get ourselves and yourselves hyped up for the PLE. But of course, we're off the mania. Sometimes, sometimes feels like a PLE in its own right. And I'm really hoping that's the case as well. So uh, it's been a real pleasure having you, uh, well, having me with you guys, boys, and also having you guys on the <laughs> channel uh, over the years as well. And uh, hope to uh, chat wrestling with you once again very soon. Thanks again, Absolutely. boys. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, yeah, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, mate. Bye, mate. Nice. Yeah. Um, so thank you. And thank you, Scott, for coming on. And obviously, please go and support Sam. Uh, please go and support Scott. I thought uh, I was so, tired. Uh, yeah, absolutely, mate. Honestly, I'm <laughs> feeling it. Um, please go and support Scott at Rebellious Noise. And let's get your thoughts. Uh, one of the biggest, I guess, shocks of the weekend. Uh, yeah. Sam, Sami Zayn defeating Gunther. Your thoughts on this one as a whole, please. See, I, I'm more positive about it th than you guys. I, I, because I didn't think it was going to happen. Mainly because I was I was quite sure Cody was winning, so I didn't think they'd have uh, they'd end two historic title reigns in 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 one weekend. So and oh my lord, they did. So I thought a better story might be Sammy to lose here, continue the underdog from the underground thing until SummerSlam, 
where he beats the living crap out of Gunther and takes it from him. I genuinely thought that was where they were going with this. Uh, and, but, and everyone keeps talking about, oh, it should have been Gable. Yes, exactly. It should have been Gable, but it wasn't. He wasn't good enough to beat Gunther that time, and he wasn't good enough to beat Sammy. So he lost. He's No, no disrespect. He's a two-time loser, and that is why it's only a matter of time, and I love Gable, but the story is he's a two-time loser, and that he's eventually going to turn heel and turn on Sammy. That is where we're going with this. Um, and, 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 you know, I've been telling Andy this for weeks. I've been like, we're going to get the nicey, 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 nicey Gable until he snaps. And we're not going to get the Ashish, thank you, Gable when he turns heel either. We're going to get this vicious monster who's going to break every bone in Sami Zayn's body, take his title off him, and then it'll go from there. Gunther, I think, is done in, in, in regards to this. Um, but it doesn't, like, it, Gun, Gunther is now going to be, I think... He doesn't need to be a champion. He just needs to be Gunther. I, I genuinely think he's going to be one of Cody's first challengers. I don't know when. I don't know how that's going to go. But they are absolutely going to hotshot him to the main event scene. That doesn't mean they put a belt on him. It just means they're going to fight. He's going to be in some marquee matches. That's why they did it. That's why they kind of hotshotted this story. So Sammy's going to go off and feud with uh, Chad Gable. Uh, and Gunther's going to go off and, I think, feud with Cody. But... um. The, like, here's the thing with Sami Zayn. They, Sami Zayn still exists in some quarters, uh, and, and people forget that. It like Before anyone knew what an LA night was, um, it, it was all about Sami Zayn. Um, let's not forget, when they were pushing Cody last year, they got quite worried that he wasn't as over as Sami. So they had all these moments where they were putting each other over, in, like you know, being nice to each other. And they were friends, and they were they were on the same side. They did all that because they were so worried about Sammy being the guy when they wanted it to be Cody. A lot of that has stuck. So I'm actually all right with this, and because it's WrestleMania 40, they sent a lot of fans home happy. Um, there was a lot of babyface victories. It was only really Logan Paul who retained in terms of the heels. Um, so. I'm kind of for it. And and I love the idea of on Raw, perhaps Sammy comes out and bumps belts with Cody and or just a little thing like that. And it also ble bled into the story of the bloodline got their comeuppance here. Roman finally lost. Sammy Zayn had to be part of that. The match was overbooked as enough as it was. So, so Sammy coming out and helping him wasn't going to be on the cards, but Sammy then coming out afterwards and him and LA Knight and Jey Uso being the ones to lift Cody up, all that mattered. And Sammy winning the belt mattered and played into that as well. So I'm actually all right with it, uh, where I didn't think I would be. Okay, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. And uh, thank you again for your extensive view on that. Again, I think you're right. I, I, I'm not entirely sure Gunther can afford to challenge Cody just yet. I believe he will have a world championship run down the line. I'm talking about Gunther here. Uh, but obviously, if he, if he challenges Cody right now, he's losing. And I'm not sure you can... Really, you know, you want to have Gunther lose twice in a row in a big feud. Um, but yeah, very, very important views there, Sam. And thank you for that. As we move on to The Rock and Roman Reigns defeating Cody Rose and Seth with big implications for night two, which we will talk about uh, shortly. Um, the Rock got the win here. It felt like the right thing to do again going into night two bloodline rules to explain all of the pomposity, ridiculousness and chicanery that we saw in that main event. But uh, a pretty decent showing for The Rock, uh, yeah. which I'm surprised at, actually. I wasn't sure he was going to be able to carry this thing. But he did. And, and Cody and him had some nice back and forth. Um, Seth looked pretty good, too. I thought everybody here looked you know, this was a WrestleMania caliber match, and uh, The Rock was on top form, as was everybody else here. Can't say any fairer than that. It was the right choice to have The Rock and Roman win leading in tonight, too. Sam, your thoughts on this one? Uh, I'm still quite confused what bloodline rules means, other than no disqualification. Ka chaos, no DQ. Yeah. No, 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 no DQ. Uh yeah, with the, with the chaos of bloodline rules, uh, Kaiwan says here, and Scott's thanking us for uh, for being on. Cheers, Scott. We'll we'll see you soon, and hopefully we'll see you in Glasgow as well, mate, because uh, we got we got plans. Hopefully, don't we, Dom? If we, if we well, can. well, let's <laughs> not. Yeah, let let let's let's you know whether we're going as fans or or, or otherwise. You know, let's let's uh, let's we'll let's 
but yeah, let, fingers fingers crossed. You know, we we'll, we'll, I don't want to count any chickens before. Yeah, that, don't, so. don't want to count any chickens, but let's let's fingers crossed that we all make it to Glasgow in some form, shall we say? One way um, or another. Yeah, one, one uh, way so, or another. Go on. So yeah, for me, like th this was good. There was a lot of smoke and mirrors with the rock uh, that that I picked up on, but I don't mind because it worked. Uh, I actually think this was a safer a safer bet. Like he's probably going to have a singles match with Roman at some point, and that's cool. But right now, this is exactly what they needed to do. Let's all forget about the silliness that they tried doing and that which didn't work. Um, and Cohen says they sent a lot of people home mad as well. Yeah, but generally speaking in wrestling, the good guy overcoming the villain sends the majority of the people home happy. The majority. I know there's a lot of contrarians who thought Cody was losing a second time, but to anybody who's been paying attention, he was not losing at this WrestleMania, you know. Um, sorry, he just wasn't, and and like he's, they they want to make Cody Rhodes the next generational babyface, and and I've been telling people to make the peace with that for two years because that's been the plan for two years, and will continue to be the plan for a long time. So, but anyway, yeah, I thought this was a, a fun match. I was a bit surprised. I said to Jess when it happened, I'm surprised they didn't cheat to win, but I'm kind of glad they didn't because it made the Rock look strong. Uh, made, and made Roman look strong as well. That there was no, I know there was some chicanery with uh, the Usos, but yeah, it, it was good. It, it it did exactly what it needed to do. It was just a went on for forty five minutes or forty four minutes, which is absolutely mind blowing. But I had fun. I wasn't bored, or I didn't look at my phone at once during this. I was just blown away by the two heavyweight champions were both in the ring. The Rock was in the ring, and Cody Rhodes, the heir apparent, was in the ring all together at the same time. I never quite got over how mad that was, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, what, what about you? Yeah, yeah, like I say, uh, Rock came off really well. I thought, I thought it was it went better than most people thought it was going to, and an excellent, uh, an excellent, uh, you know, end to night one. Uh, and the right call, as I said, heading into night two. And before we do go into night two, I'm going to have a little, we're going to have a little break. We're going to talk about some other stuff that happened WrestleMania weekend. Of course, we saw the Hall oh, yeah. of Fame. Have you seen the Hall of Fame yet, Sam? I haven't, no. Um, I, well, I still need to watch it. It's okay. I want to talk about briefly, I want to talk about Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame speech, which I thought was uh, brilliant. Paul Heyman went back into his ECW gear. He uh, told uh, the ECW doubters to suck his um, his appendage. Uh, he uh, he um, put over Triple H. He put over a lot of people. He put over Jade Cargill. He put over the younger generation. I just wanted to shout out that this was one of the best Hall of Fame speeches. Not that we were going to see anything else from Paul Heyman, one of the greatest managers and personalities of all time in wrestling. But I was... Uh, I was particularly impressed that he used his Hall of Fame speech to put over other people, and mm. that I believe is a fine example of a human uh, of a human being. I, you know, using a platform to put over other people. Um, and I, um, I was I was impressed with it. So Sam, I will ask you, even though you've not seen it, are you going to go back and watch it? Are you interested? I, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit there. I just haven't had time. I've been watching wall to wall wrestling. Uh, since I got back on Saturday. So <laughs> I haven't stopped. It's just been wrestling, 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 wrestling. Went around my mum's for tea. Wrestling, 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 wrestling. Went around my in-laws for tea. Wrestling, 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 wrestling. So uh, the Hall of Fame, uh, I was hoping to get get to, um, but it, it wasn't a priority. Like I know it, it was part. it's part of the show increasingly these days. So it probably should have been instead of some of the indie stuff I watched. But... Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm really looking, particularly Paul Heyman. I think he's one of the biggest uh, stars who's got in there. Um, I think he's incredibly important. He's been, you know, he's been important to wrestling for a very long time before even there was an ECW. Uh, poorly, dangerously, was, was uh, an important part of wrestling. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to go back and watch this. Yeah, absolutely. An, an incredible moment for Paul Heyman, paying tribute to his legacy, you know, an incredible uh, performer, you know, behind the microphone, uh, just, a, you know, it, the obviously the ECW stuff, but also, again, you know, he used his time to put over a new generation of talent, and that I thought was fantastic. I am also going to tell, show you something that you probably won't have seen yet, because I want to get your thoughts on this before we go into night two and finish mm -hmm. the review, and that is... 
the Uncle Howdy return tease at WWE World. Uh, there is obviously a tease somewhere in the documentary, uh, but uh, before WrestleMania, uh, there was, of course, the Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal panel, uh, which obviously paid tribute to Bray and paid tribute to his family and the people that made that documentary possible. Do go and watch it if you are fans. Uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the panel, which is, of course, separate to the documentary, uh, this was played. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So we had a Uncle Howdy return tease at WWE World. Of course, uh, from what I understand, WWE World was uh, had also had a Firefly Funhouse in it and the door for Bray Wyatt as well. And a few other things, of course, WWE World it looked like a fantastic time uh, for, for everybody that was at Mania. Uh, as we, before we go into night two, Sam, uh, that I think is a pretty clear statement of intent uh, that yeah. Uncle Howdy is returning. I just want to also, of course, credit uh, for that video, uh, Trace Dura, Dura Barris on Twitter. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, of course, it was a, you know, again, that was played at the end of the panel. Uh, Sam, um, uh, you know, I know we do a lot of Bray Wyatt content on this channel, which is why I wanted to bring that up. Obviously, we were, uh, you know, I was part of a review uh, a couple of days ago with Spalsy, very emotional just after I watched it. Um, what did you think when you saw that just now? And I know you haven't watched the documentary, not to spoil it, of course. I won't tell you when it's coming. I won't tell you where it is. Uh, but uh, there is, of course, another tease there. Uh, it is a very emotional documentary. Uh, your yeah. thoughts on an Uncle Howdy return uh, to WWE and what you would like to see? Well, I, like you know, I'd heard of the two teasers. So after those two teasers, it's a dead cert. Both still with the company. Um, the fact that they're doing that now, very prominently, it's only a matter of time. Uh, and I'm I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm really really pleased. Um, I think there's a lot more story there for them to tell with Uncle Howdy. Uh, I, I've I've got I know how I'd like them to do it. I love the idea of Bo coming out and being like, look, you know. We all know I lost my brother recently. You know, we all know Bray Wyatt you know, was my brother. I know we never really acknowledged it on TV before now. I'm Taylor Rotunda. You know, I'm not Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas has been who I am, just like, you know, Wyndham was was, was Bray. Um, you know, I, I love my brother. He was excellent. We, we, you know, we never got to work together until I was Uncle Howdy. You know, my brother had a dark side that he'd used to bring out, and that's what people kind of loved about him. But as many of you know by now, at this point, he's got the hat in his hands. I have a dark side too. But right now, I'm going to wrestle. I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm back with the company full time. I'm going to, you know, I'm going after the championships. I'm going to do this. I'm going that. Let's just hope no one pushes me to the point where my dark side comes out. And then I think I think he like he needs to wrestle as him for a bit. But bit by bit, just. Things make him crack. Things make him... And that's when we need to see Uncle Howdy. They need to not mess it up. They can't do what they did with The Fiend, uh, where they overused it, uh, and we saw it too much. I'd be happy if we see cryptic teases every now and then when he's in a feud, and we see him wrestle as Uncle Howdy once, maybe twice a year at big pay-per-views. I want Uncle Howdy to be used sparingly, uh, but I think he, I can't wait to see him come back, and I t and he I'd now bet my mortgage on him coming back 100. Uh, Absolutely, and I can't wait. I just can't wait. It's probably a safer bet than you betting some testicles, but uh, but there we are. I bet them too. I bet them too. But uh, okay. I, I've been married for a long time, so they're no good to me anymore. I'm joking. Well, there they, they, there you are. Uh, moving on to night two. Uh, and uh, again, I apologize if my match order is slightly off, but we started, I believe, with LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Um, AJ Styles uh, should always be featured in a prominent position on WrestleMania, in my opinion. AJ Styles is uh, absolutely one of the best of all time and a surefire Hall of Famer. LA Knight, I would like to see five, ten years from now in that conversation. I think he's the most charismatic superstar in WWE at this time. 
I am not entirely sold on his in-ring matches, on, on his in-ring um, presentation. Of course, AJ Styles. Everyone is sold on AJ Styles' in-ring presentation, but it yeah. still feels like the right thing to do to give LA Knight a big WrestleMania win. His first WrestleMania win, Sam, against a talented yeah. level of AJ Styles, the phenomenal one, uh, you know, BFT for the finish. Um, and uh, quite a nice build to this rivalry, actually. Uh, mm. You know, LA Knight getting arrested, etc. cetera. Um, LA Knight was the right choice. That's my thoughts. Your thoughts, Sam? Yeah, look, I I wasn't massively sold on this as a feud. Uh, I really wasn't. I, I was just happy to have both men on the cards, on the card, wrestling and another competent performer. That that to me, and they had a good they had a good fight, they had a good showing. Um where it goes from here, I don't know. Uh yeah, I just like AJ Styles can pull a good match out of anyone. I kind of like LA Knight. I, I don't see an issue with him. In ring, I don't think he's ever going to be one of these. Sorry, I'm gonna to have to yawn. Sorry, Ooh, I don't ever think he's going to be one of the all time greats in, in the sense of like in ring or Okada, like that, you know, someone like that. But I think he's a great character, and that's enough for me. Um, AJ putting him over at WrestleMania is a big deal. Having a win over AJ Styles at WrestleMania is a massive deal, and that's a huge show of confidence in him as a performer, him as a wrestler. Uh, and speaking of which, I actually think with the what we were saying about Uncle Howdy a moment ago, I love the idea of Uncle Howdy almost serving as um, LA Knight's guardian angel from afar because of the connection between LA Knight and Bray Wyatt, especially when, uh, <coughs> especially when Wyatt, um, no, after we lost Wyatt and um, LA Knight came out and cut quite a, uh, a heart, you know, a heartfelt promo about him. It, half in kayfabe, half out of kayfabe. Um, but I love the idea of maybe that carrying on somewhere. Like, I'm not really interested in this AJ feud with, uh, with LA Knight. I, I, I just happy to see them both on the card, really. And that's, yeah, you know, I quickly respond uh, to Prince Ali here, who says, um, "What is something about wrestling fans do that annoys you?" I'm just going to go with the one thing, and that's tribalism. I, I hate the I hate the idea. I am the anti-tribalism uh, wrestling guy. I hate the idea that because you watch one, you can't watch another. It's ridiculous. Stop doing it. There yeah, it yeah. Uh, for, for me, it's um, I, I love wrestling, and I love wrestling fans. Of course, some of them, uh, some of, I've got some good friends that are wrestling fans, but it's wrestling fans that that uh, that, that that take it too seriously. And when the the people that and I, I don't know any of these people, or at least to my knowledge, the ones that stop wrestlers at airports, the oh, ones yeah. that the ones that the ones that stalk wrestlers, the ones that show up at their homes. Um, you know, I understand that that uh, wrestling is a is a safe haven and a support network for people with mental health issues with various challenges. Yeah. But for me, um, if you're if you are, you know, and wrestling is of course theatre, but if you're so invested in the theatre. That you can't see the reality, and you want to go yeah. to someone someone's house or stop them when they're having a when they're just trying to get to work on an airplane or whatever, you know that that's where I have an issue. Is, is these people are people too, and you know, yeah. while while they are, while they have a platform that is of course global, they are real people uh, who have a job to do, and um, so that that's what I struggle with with wrestling fans. But a very interesting to, to, a great question, excuse me, from Prince Ali. And let's have that more of that conversation as well. Uh, you you were right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark LFC. We did. I I, I skipped ahead with oh, the Uncle Howdy we'll get with, the, with the Uncle Howdy thing. Um, I was going to do that uh, until I was the middle, but we started with Seth and Drew. Now I have things to say about this. Uh, not that I am, of course, a a uh, notable uh, podcaster in the wrestling space so my anger will probably well at least you guys give a monkeys so at least you guys will will watch uh, but i thought this was drew's moment uh, and i thought the cash in was 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 tone deaf um i am i don't know how else you would have done it and i appreciate that uh, damian priest is an incredible uh uh, talent, I've quite enjoyed the uh, bisexual Undertaker hashtag on Twitter, uh, referring to Damien Priest. Oh, it was well. you who retweeted that? It was. 
I, I, I thought the maniacs were running the asylum. Oh, sorry, I, I, I unretweeted it, thinking it had been done in by mistake. I didn't realize no, no. It was something he's, he's loving. It was, it's, oh. it's a, it was a comedy thing, and of course, of, right. You know, I see. Sorry, uh, Damien Priest is is open about that, and I thought it was a, quite a nice little, uh, little, uh, uh, you know, comedic hashtag on Twitter. Um, but yes, uh, Damien Priest uh, winning is good. I'm happy with it, but he's, you know, he's going to lose to Drew. Because uh, they want to get Drew and Punk, you know, towards Drew and Punk. So, I I wanted this to be Drew's moment. It, it was Drew's moment. It was beautiful, and they took it away from him. Uh, he could have cashed in. Could have cashed in tonight. He could have cashed in tonight, and I would have been okay with it. Um, it was mania. It was his first title win in front of fans. If Damian Priest would have cashed in tonight, I would have been all for it. And in fact, I would have been euphoric because you know Damian would have still got his moment. Uh, but uh, for me, this was Drew's moment, and I was not happy. And I saw some some tweets from uh, Drew's family who were in attendance, who, of course, were also not happy. Um, your thoughts on this, then, Sam? I was not impressed with uh, with uh, you know I was not impressed with the result. The punk stuff. I think I have a, um, a collage here. Yeah. So the punk stuff. You know, punk be recovering earlier than normal to to beat down Drew which obviously led to punks to to, uh, to Damian Priest cash in that was well done uh, and the, the the sort of story of Drew being so obsessed with um punk that he took his eye off the ball that was great but again they could have done all this today as far as i'm concerned main raw after mania um you could have had Drew and punk in the ring distracted and um and then had him cash in uh, and left Drew to have his mania moment. And for me, that's what it should have should have it should have remained. Uh, that's my thoughts. Your thoughts, Sam? I bloody loved it. Everything. I, I'll, I'll tell you why. You mark. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely. Jess and I were in bits. Uh, watching this, we were laughing our heads off, and we're huge McIntyre fans, by the way. Um, it just like so for starters, uh, Mark. I, I totally get Mark's point here. Should have been a, a two, you know, a, a two-minute match. Um, but I, and I kind of thought that. But I liked the idea of the inevitability of, of of Seth's defeat. You know, his body's breaking down. He's given a lot to Cody. He's basically sacrificed for Cody. Great story. When Drew was like, it's going to be an execution. It kind of was. But I do like the idea that Seth got some offense in and just would not go down. For a bit, I, I think that's very on brand for Seth Rollins. He is him after all. Um, but there was no doubt in my mind that Rollins was losing here. No doubt in my mind, it, it made good sense to lose. But the, the storyline here, it, like I, I absolutely like the, the CM Punk stuff with him just beating him up, then moving out of the way for the cash in, and then sitting cross legged on the desk, pissing himself while Drew were. Um, was getting pinned. I thought was hilarious, um, and it was and it was really kind of it was hard to know at this point who was the face and who was the heel. But but the fact is, the story here is Drew was the hero for so long he became the villain, some Harvey Dent style, but then couldn't get out of his own way. If if he could have held the belt, this is my moment. You know what, Seth, respect. Didn't think it was going to go down that way, but respect, and then left. But he didn't. He couldn't help himself. He had to get in the face of CM Punk. He had to just be the heel. He had to just push it and do that. He had to just wind up Punk that little bit too much. And Damien Priest was ready. And, and, and that, I thought, was really good storytelling. Drew is back to square one, and it's going to be good TV. I can't wait to see how annoyed he gets now. I can't wait to see the matches between him and, and Damian Priest. And also, yes, obviously they're going Punk and, and McIntyre now, but I don't think um, that feud needs a belt. I just don't. I think, like, let's have some time with Priest in this role. Let's see how that does. And I do actually think Priest is going to end up feuding with Balor. Uh, I, I think that is inevitable eventually. But I like this because it sets up lots of multi-layered stories. I'm for it. Drew being the guy who just comes close but never quite gets there. Got his moment. Got what he wanted. But then bittersweet. He had it taken off him. I, I thought it was great TV. Um, like he, he can't say he didn't get what he wanted. 
he can't say he didn't do what he said he was going to do, but he went too far. Um, and, and it's like, as uh, Kywan says here, you know, we, you know, we all we sh- we always knew a cashing was likely coming at Mania because he's had it since Money in the Bank. That was some time ago. We, you know, we were both in the building. No, I, I love this. I can't wait to see where it goes. I absolutely loved it. And CM Punk just cross-legged, laughing his head off on the desk was the icing on the cake. Well, I look, look, look at you. The, the, you're suddenly a big punk fan again, right? No, 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 no. Well, here's the thing. This is what I like. This is what I was got annoyed at the other day on, on, on WhatsApp. Look, I am out of everybody who who on Give Me a Hole, yeah, I am the biggest CM Punk fan. I am the biggest CM Punk fan. I've been a CM Punk fan since Ring of Honor before any of these WWE lads, WWE only bro guys, any of you lot knew who CM Punk was. I was a CM Punk fan. The old, I, I love CM Punk as a wrestler. I love him as a performer. I thought he was fantastic at WrestleMania. My only point is because of some of the issues he's had with alleged workplace violence, I can't be a fan of the man behind the character because I think behind all that awesomeness, he's probably a deeply unpleasant individual and he's got the rest of his career to prove me wrong and make it up to me and win me back around as a long-time punk fan. That is what I'm going to say about that. But do I want to keep seeing him kicking ass? Yes, of course I do. Okay. Okay. Well, that, thank you for clarifying there, there Sam. And, um, you know, obviously there's this, there's all these rumours about we, we're seeing the footage from All In on AEW Dynamite. I, I hope that's kayfabe. I really it's do. Kayfabe. I hope that, yeah, I hope it's a, it's a gimmick thing because uh, they, they, AEW were obviously, you know, not doing their best work at the moment, in my opinion. So I think it would be a wrong move on a business level for for them to do that. Uh, but anyway, we'll move. We'll, we'll Anthony will be covering that on Wednesday right here on the Give Me a Whole Year podcast. So cheap plug there for Anthony's Wednesday night Dino Might stream. Um, and uh, we will move swiftly on to where are we now? Let's have a look. We are on to EO Sky versus Bailey. For the WWE Women's Championship, Bailey winning the Rumble to get to this point. Sam, again, not many wrong calls this evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Bailey winning was the absolute right call uh, to you know to have uh, to have Bailey win. Uh, your thoughts? Um, you know, like I say, I think EO Sky did some incredible work yeah. uh, when it came to. Um, Kind of uh, sort of count, countering Bailey and kind of changing things up, uh, you know, move set wise. EO Sky is an incredible talent, uh, you know, and, and probably considers herself the, the leader of um, of damage control now. Uh, but but Bailey was uh, was was on form and was it was absolutely the best result to have Bailey win at WrestleMania. Sam, your thoughts on this one? Can't disagree. It was ace. I loved it. Uh, the entrances were, were part of the best bit for me as well. I, uh, obviously, Tokyo Shark bow, 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 is, is like at its best on a stage like that. You know, I Sky's theme. Um, and then, like, I'd, what the hell was Bailey's entrance? But I was kind of like, where are the Bailey buddies? Where are the Bailey buddies? Where are they? Oh, they're still dead. Uh, but um, so a uh, part of me respects them for not doing that and bringing that back. She's evolved. I suppose we're now in the Cleopatra era of um, of Bailey, which is fine. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, it's, as far as the match, defo the right call. Bailey's time. Bailey has been with the company forever and ever and ever, and people keep sleeping on this on this character on this wrestler. Like she's not had her big WrestleMania coronation like Rhea Ripley's had it, Becky Lynch has had it, Charlotte Flair has had it, uh, Sasha Banks has had it. Ba- Bailey hasn't had this yet, and it was goddamn overdue. Um, and, and I'm glad she got it here. Um, what a moment. I can't wait to see where this goes. I can't wait to see how many people she floors. I hope this reign goes on for a good year. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, Bailey deserves this platform, deserves uh, to to be here and I, and I think damage control are, are a great heel faction again I'm not entirely sure what 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 they do you obviously think they're okay with the tag team gold yeah uh, but but I you know again I don't think it was a good weekend for them but Bailey particularly you know Sean here and again deserves her flowers and she got them and I think it was absolutely the right call there 
uh, media modus gamer is in uh, kaiwan thank you for all your comments mark lfc as well we really really appreciate you all being here yes uh, thank you so yes. much for, for for joining us for our review of wrestlemania dan will be here very quickly after or maybe uh you know certainly a little bit of time after our review is finished for raw the raw after mania of course as well so stick with us right here on the give me a whole year wrestling podcast i imagine this should go till about midnight so we'll have an hour then between this and the uh Raw review. Uh, we are going to move it on to the worst match, I believe, which is a shame for the people that are in it. Um, I'm moving us on, Sam, to the Philadelphia Street Fight. The Pride, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament. The final, oh yeah, and BFAB, who is also in the Pride now. And BFAB was B-Fab. actually, yeah, BFAB was pretty cool, actually. I was pretty impressed with BFAB here. Um, Versus the final testament, uh, carrying cross, altars of pain, uh, accompanied by Paul Ellering, um, <laughs> with Bubba Ray Dudley as a special guest referee because Philadelphia, yeah, and um, Snoop Dogg because why not? Snoop Dogg, and I, a partridge in a pear tree, yeah. I, I want to kind of get through this one pretty quickly, yeah, me too. Um, Bobby Lashley is a bona fide megastar and uh, a bona fide stud. Uh, I thought you were going to break it. Certified G. I will if you want. Don't tempt me. Oh, my God. Go go on. Do it. I want to see how I want to see. Certified My name is Enzo Amore, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud. And you can't teach that. There you go. I'm not doing the next bit. Okay, okay. I've missed that. I've missed that. Yeah, yeah, me too. I hated it as well when he did it. Enzo's in MLW now again. uh, Don't sleep on MLW, everyone. No, Um, don't. Yeah, so Bobby, to me, deserves better than this. And Karrion Cross, given my love for dark gimmicks, um, I I, I, I really like Karrion Cross. I think he's really talented. I think his pairing with his wife Scarlett is great. I, yeah. I I was always I was happy to see um, Officer of Pain back, but something's not clicking, um, and I don't know what it is. And this is for the final testament. Um, this was a Philadelphia match for Philadelphia's sake. Um, Snoop Dogg was there for the sake of it, um, and uh, Bubba Ray Dudley was there for the sake of it. This was comic relief in the middle of um everything else as far as i was concerned um i don't really have much much else to say of course the pride were going to win it's wrestlemania um i think the final testament got a win on weekly tv um leading up to this so what do you think about this one sam it's the most it's the most meh match on the whole card i'm not so sure what i was expecting but um I think yeah. a, a, a Philly street fight needed to be on the card in Philadelphia at WrestleMania 40. And I think these were the right people to do it. Uh, Bully Ray being the referee and putting on the glasses, I thought was a, a, a fun spot. It was almost like a don't forget who I am boy uh, when, when he did that. I kind of liked it. I say I'm a bit more positive about this match. I, I, I it, This was the match where you kind of poured your drinks and, and, and you passed your snacks around a little bit. Um like you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't brilliant, but I think it was exactly what it needed to be. I thought B Fab looked good. Quite what they're doing with Snoop Dogg, I have no idea, but he, he did pop me a couple of times on commentary. Um, I, I don't think they wanted this to be comic relief. I think it was accidentally comic relief. Um, I'll tell you where it should go if they want to redeem this though. Where they should go from here is let's have. I know I've already pitched the hell in a cell once tonight, but let's have Lashley versus Cross. A singles feud and let's play it straight let's keep it serious fighter versus fighter badass versus badass legit versus legit let's do that because you're right with cross because i'm a big cross fan and in tna he was great in mlw he was great everywhere else he's been he's been great something's not clicked in wwe now i love the idea um of cross doing what he did when he first came back um, he just sat, they, Scarlet silently walked out, 
grinned manically at Roman Reigns and put the hourglass down. That was interesting. And, and they never did anything with it. They he, he then got lost in the shuffle. Now, that is what we need to see from Karrion Cross. Go back to being the harbinger. Go back to doing that, where, you know, that that sort of stuff. Like, like he can do that to Lashley, but let's see him have a pop at Cody. Obviously fail, but let's see him have a pop at a pay-per-view against against now that like their main event guy or whoever else. Let's go back to basics with Karrion Cross. Go back to complete basics and have him be the guy he was in NXT because he was fascinating in NXT. That you know he was terrifying. So they need to completely strip him strip him away, separate him from AOP. Let's have just AOP as a tag team. Keep Paul Eller in because he's ace. Um, but let's get Scarlet and Cross back where they are doing what they send them back to NXT. Perhaps maybe send them back to NXT build him back up into the thing that originally got him over before he, he came to the main roster and they dressed him up as a gimp, uh, released him, brought him back and did nothing with him. Apart mm. from that one moment with Roman Reigns that never got paid off. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I think. I, I don't think it's too late for Karrion Cross. I just think they need to give him some tender loving care. Yeah, I hope so. And I think a lot of people do and have hoped for that for a while. We haven't got it yet. So let's see what happens. But again, I think Bobby is the, you know, he is he's a bona fide main eventer. So I can't see Cross winning, no. but maybe he should. Maybe he should to put him over, you know, because again, Cross is, you know, uh, Cross probably needs, he needs a win like that, a big win like that. So we'll see. Um, so yeah. So respond uh, to Namath. He's asking where people are. <laughs> so Namath, uh, Sassy is, uh, I don't know where Sassy is at the moment. Um, Anthony is enjoying his time off. He doesn't do a lot of WWE stuff. Uh, so we are covering for... We're, do, we're doing that um, today. Uh, Anthony does his AEW stuff. Kind of You'll see him on Wednesday. We'll see him on Wednesday. We'll see him on Wednesday. And Sassy you will also see uh, on Wednesday, no doubt, uh, with Anthony in the chat. Um, so, yeah, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, as we move forward, Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens for the United States championship um again another good call again i wouldn't have had anybody else win it um logan paul is the one of the top heels if not the top heel in wb at the moment incredible ability um and just a great talent overall uh kevin that's not to take anything away from kevin owens and randy orton who had a, there was a lovely little comedic run uh where obviously Orton and uh Owens attacked uh, yeah, Logan it Paul it was good it was good until of, of course all hell broke loose uh but yeah Logan Paul uh getting the win with a fantastic frog splash uh as uh off the, I think the back of an RKO to Kevin Owens um I thought this was the right call Logan Paul probably going into a a, a feud with LA Knight now I think that's what's rumored because if you're going to do something with LA Knight we need to do something soon. I think his momentum is still there, but it's certainly not what it was. Um, so I think you need to have LA Knight win against Logan Paul. And I can't wait to mm. see the promos that Logan Paul and LA Knight run on each other. Um, so, yeah, that's my take. Logan Paul was the right man to win this, Sam. Uh, your thoughts on this one, please. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I actually thought Randy was walking out of this. Uh, because obviously he's been gone a long time. He's come back from injury. It would be a great way of, um, I think, like getting the United States champion back up, championship back on Randy uh, would be a would be a solid decision at some point. But it, it doesn't have to happen yet. Um, yeah, so I think Logan winning was was the right call for a couple of. I know, yeah, I, I, that popped me. Uh, you know, I am the the last rock and roller. But um, but yeah. It, I, there's a couple of things I like about this. For starters, it's nice to have a heel retain. Um, and Logan Paul is still a big star, let's not forget. And it's also really, really encouraging because I actually thought Logan Paul was going to lose here um, and, and then just go back to being a part-timer. Because we see Logan Paul. Let's not take away from this guy. We see him on TV a lot. He turns up to work a lot and he doesn't need his, a day job being a wrestler, but he has it. So him keeping the belt probably means he's going to keep turning up, which I'm happy about. Uh, so all credit to Logan Paul. The other two look great. I love it when he ran out of the ring at the start and they were both were like, 
no, 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 no. And they both just went after him. That was really funny. And then they beat him down for a while. Um, like, the more that match went on, I remember just thinking, you know what? He has to win here. He has to win. And especially after the Sami Zayn victory, I was confident Cody was winning. Um, everything that happened with McIntyre and Seth, I thought he needs to retain. He, 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 he actually, Otherwise, this it's too much. So... I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes from here because he's going to be impossible now. And everyone talking about him being annoying, then he's doing his job because they're paying him to be annoying and they're paying him to put on good matches. But I just, I, I do want to say I, I didn't like seeing I show speed. Um, I, I've seen I show, show speed say some very unsavory and sexist things on um, some of his streams. So I don't really appreciate seeing him on my, um, my TV. Uh, if I'm being honest, but because he's a little prick, but there you go. Right. Okay. So, so there you go. Uh, and thank you all for your lovely comments. And again, thank you. I just want to take a moment before we move to the main event, because I think we've got everything uh, and I don't think I've missed anything. Um, you know, we, we really can't do this without you. There's no point. I'm very rarely on this uh, podcast now just because I'm busy with stuff. So it is a joy to be back here right here on the Give Me A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast with you guys and our community. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate you, and I hope that goes without saying. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, I, I like I say, going back to your points there, Logan Paul is, is the ultimate heel, and I think LA Knight is the perfect person to beat him. So let's see what happens over the next few weeks and months with that. Um, and are you prepared to go into the main event, Sam? Are you ready? I was ball ready. Let's do it. Oh, you have to say it on Triple H. You ready? <laughs> guns up. I'll show you some guns. Anyway, there we go. Do, do, for that. Do, do, do you slap yourself when you get excited very often, Sam? Oh, more, 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 than you, more than you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So again, Ow. so then, guys, we have reached, we have reached the, the moment. Uh, the story we have we are finishing our review as cody finished his story um last night um <laughs> nemeth says vince loves so, so does tony khan so, so <laughs> does tony khan uh, we, this is what we can say on give me a whole year that we can't say on other platforms that we have um a- anywho uh we're out we're out for the uh Okay, there's a there's there's an interesting conversation, but we won't we won't address that. We'll let you guys discuss. What I'm just going to say, guys. I'm just going to address it once. Vince is not in the background. I can categorically tell you he is not in the background. He is long gone. We we uh, did. Sorry, go on. That's it. I was just I was it's just worth, addressing that because it's important it is, to address. It is worth mentioning, of course, that we did see Stephanie McMahon at the beginning of WrestleMania yeah. um, to to usher in the Paul Levesque era. It did feel quite hopeful, Sam. We haven't yes. touched on that. We did kind of gloss over it. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it, um, not because it wasn't a great moment, uh, but again, different people will have different things to say. Stephanie McMahon mm. introducing WrestleMania and the Paul Levesque era. You have? Do you have anything to, to say on that? I've got nothing to really say about about Stephanie McMahon. Um, again, the, the, there are some the, there's some situation. We're not going to talk about it here, but there are some situations that they still need to address there regarding her. Um, not that she's done anything wrong or anything like that. They just need to clarify a couple of points and, and, and take it from there. Uh, the Triple H era, I'm all for it. All for it. Um, like you know, this is now this is TKO are. Again, I know Ronda Rousey has said something, and you've, you've you've read that in the dirt sheets. Yes, Bruce is still employed there, and yes, he's been described as Vince's avatar. But you know what Bruce likes more than Vince? His job and money. Right now, TKO own WWE. They're paying Nick Khan and Triple H to run it, and potentially Stephanie McMahon as well. Vince, I'm sure, has Sunday lunch with his son-in-law and daughter, but that's where his influence ends like just i'm not gonna that that it's, it's just a fact he's not part of it and i'm not gonna highlight that next comment um but yeah so there we are um but yeah in, in terms of the triple h era dom i'm, I'm here for it. it it's just do you remember when vince originally retired before he bloody came back um and you know you know 
Uh, and yeah. all of a sudden the product just improved it just exploded with creativity and, and i'll tell you a great example of that is now the multi-layered storytelling we're getting it's the fact that like we're getting it's no no longer a case of that person's feuding with that person and that person's feuding with that person and it's all siloed off now when someone does something it matters um and it's connected to that feud which is also connected to that feud and it it's all one you know coherent universe as opposed to what it was under Vince for a, for a long time, uh, so I I know they're marketing this as the uh, the Triple H era, partially to get away from some of the th the new stories from this year, and but I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm I'm a big Triple H guy. Long may he reign. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like I say, it's a very exciting time. I saw the press conference where he said, you know, he's having fun. He's enjoying his job. Uh, and and I, that's that's fantastic for him, and I hope it, it leads to some excellent television. WrestleMania 40, of course, leads me to believe that we're in a golden age. So let's yeah. let's ha let's have it, let's have it. And I just want to say as well because I haven't been on uh, the stream since I did have a conversation with Anthony about this. But uh, as Mark has uh, said, we're not addressing the uh, Stephanie McMahon moments again. I just want to say congratulations to Mark, of course, uh, for whatever that is worth because you are moderating for us now. We really appreciate you. Uh, we're very grateful that anybody shows up to these streams. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, it, but, it is, but yeah, but it is wonderful, of course, because Mark has been with us for a very long time. We appreciate you all, but very much, uh, very much so. And again, I hope it goes without saying, but Mark, we appreciate you uh, and uh, and thank you for everything. Um, so to, let's let's get into this match then. Um, Sam, overbooked to all hell. Uh, John Cena coming out, Undertaker coming out to replace what was rumoured to be Stone Cold. Uh, everybody that was uh, kind of skewered by the bloodline over the last few years um, came out to support Cody to win, to, to finish the story. Uh, it was the perfect result. Um, it was the perfect end to the story. Um, Cody is... You know, and there'll always be a few doubters. I know some people are saying they're already boo booing Cody, but Roman is, of course, a a, a polarizing figure and a popular figure in his own right. Uh, Co but, but Cody, to me, is the is the next. You know, he is he's the white meat baby face, as they say. He is the ultimate baby face, and um, ne this moment needed to happen now or never. And they pull yeah. the trigger. Excellent television. Uh, of course, we have this shot here. Uh, of everybody raising Cody up. Cody brings out at the end uh, Triple H and Bruce Pritchard um, to, uh, you know, to sort of thank them as well. Um, Sam, I, I can't really say anything else here. Uh, it was a, a fantastic moment for Cody, paying homage to Dusty. I know, um, is it Pritchard and Triple H gave him the watch back that Dusty bought? To send Cody to acting school backstage after this. So a lot of things aligned for Cody, um, you know, that, that probably could have happened earlier, but it, but it but it happened tonight. I didn't think it was too much, you know, too much at the end. They give Cody a lot of camera time at the end uh, yeah. to kind of walk up the ramp and soak it in, uh, you know, with his family and stuff. Uh, it was great. The match itself was probably what we expected. Loads of finishes. You know, spamming that 2K finisher style. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but and again, John Cena comes out, Undertaker comes out, Solo comes out, uh, Jimmy comes out, you know, uh, and a, a particularly great moment, of course, when Seth sacrificed himself again, um, yes, for, for, for Cody. Um, continued to sell long after, long yeah. after the match. Continued like because Jess was like, "Is he actually like legitimately hurt?" And I was like, "No, Jess, this is wonderful, wonderful kayfabe storytelling." Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know that was obviously the Shield music played. Seth mm. came out in full Shield gear. Roman smashing uh, Seth in the back with the chair, which is of course what happened to um, Roman all those years ago uh, when the Shield broke up. So it was all very good long-term storytelling, really. And, uh, you know, uh, excellent note from Mark, of course, Bobby Roode and uh, Michael Hayes producing those main events. Bobby Roode's doing a cracking job as a backstage producer. Um, yeah, it was I, – I can't really say anything else. It, it was exactly what it should have been. It was well done. Yeah. Um, Cody won. It was the right result. Bit over the top 
in terms of booking, but I have no idea how, you know, we all knew that was coming. The only thing you could have done to make it more over the top would be have Hulk Hogan come out and hit a leg drop on Roman. Yeah, um, like, yeah. But but it had to, have, you know, like I say, you know, at the end there, you see everybody that was um, kind of, you know, kind of wronged by the bloodline. The Undertaker, of course, had nothing to do with the bloodline. Uh, so that was more of a kind of a, okay, well, we've got the Undertaker. Let's put him in there. Spot yeah, probably. it was a fan pleaser. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. It was just, have him do something at Mania, and, I, and that that that'll be the only thing for like I popped out my shoes for it. But I, I think um, I, I was of the view that Sami Zayn or like some of the people that out of like the thirty odd people or the tw- you know the twenty odd people uh, in between those two numbers that that Roman has screwed over should have been the people who who got involved. I, I actually think. You know, like we, got, we saw the Usos get involved, we saw Seth get involved, totally makes sense. Cena um, got screwed over by Roman as well, so that makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Taker taking down The Rock was pretty cool because it was more of an attitude era callback than anything else. So I don't mind that. I didn't mind it. Like, was this a, a, a bit of a cluster F? Was it overbooked to absolute hell? Yes, absolutely. Did I love every second of it? Yes, absolutely. But I do think it needs a part three. I do think there needs to be a definitive win without a single running. Um, I, I feel very strongly about that uh, because I, I do think Roman needs to go down, you know, go down on his back against Cody in a legitimate fight without anybody interfering, without any BS. Like it was great fun to do that in the WrestleMania main event. Let's just have a a smaller pay-per-view where they, they have it out one-on-one and Cody beats him clean. I think, you know, that definitive third win, the the rubber match, w- will be the thing where I think that will be the thing that cements Cody. Uh, and it can also be the start of the end of Roman's run at the head of, as the head of the table in that storyline, wherever they're going with the bloodline now. Which is not done, by the way. Like the bloodline doesn't end tomorrow. Uh, stuff like they are like I, I. Roman is going to call for a rubber match. Roman is going to call for a rematch. He's going to say, "Look, you know, you had the bloody Undertaker in there. You had all of this." Um, but so I, I do think they are going to do another one. Uh, but I also think Roman's going to go off, like because people are like, "Oh, that's it. What do they do now? That's it. That's the end. It's not the end of anything. It's not the end of anything." Um, Roman's story continues. Cody's story continues, either together with each other or separately elsewhere. Um, you know, like again, unless like you've got a source where you can back that up, it isn't. Um, y- y- you know what I mean? Like R- Roman Reigns is likely going to have some time off at some point. The fact that he's still undergoing chemotherapy was was a bit, a bit of a shock this weekend. Um, like Roman is indeed taking a break, but don't think that's it forever. Like they might do a little bit more with him between now and then. Let's also not forget there are very, 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 how how do I say this? Trustworthy rumors of the plan for SummerSlam. Um, That were, you know, that was kind of leaked by the same people who told us what was happening at Mania. So I don't, don't be surprised if you see Roman again, he might slink off for a bit, but he also might be back. But, um, yeah, we're not this the story with Roman Reigns isn't over. Uh not not forever. Uh so yeah. But remember, like if you stating something categorically in the comments doesn't mean it's true unless it there's a source that you can refer to. Uh, I have to just make that very clear. Yeah. Yeah, and of course we do appreciate all your comments and opinions, absolutely. Uh, Indeed. And, and thank you, thank you for bringing those. But but if but if there is something that is, you know, that isn't true or is is rumor, then obviously if you can state that then that that, yes. that helps us as well um because like i say you know it, it wouldn't be fair for us to be like well roman's definitely taking a break and then he shows up on raw or smackdown you know what i mean so if uh i, I you know i i want to see more from the bloodline and hopefully yeah. i will get to see that but roman absolutely deserves some time away whenever that is um so let's do the final bit uh as we started uh the as we started the review i asked people to come up with a grade uh, of the night for the whole night for the for the for both uh, and also a performer of the night and a match of the night so i am going to give this a solid 7.5 out 
out of 10. I'm also going to say my performer of the whole thing was probably Cody Rhodes. Um, I was, I'm all, I've was i been I've been always impressed with Cody. In fact, no, I'm changing it to Drew McIntyre. I'm changing it to okay. Drew. Second to Cody. Second to Cody. Uh, Co sorry, Cody is second to Drew. And this Drew is my main, uh, my, my performer, just because he deserved better, man. Um, and he was, you know, Drew's great. He's just been great. His social media game has been great. He's been fantastic. Oh, yeah. all, all around the build to Mania. Um, so my performer of the weekend was Drew. My grade was 7.5. Match of the weekend has to be the main event for me. I think Cody versus Roman for the overbook ridiculousness. Um, of course, what else did we expect? Uh, yeah. Sam, as I go through a couple of these comments, as uh, what what are your what are your what's your grade match and performer, please? Okay, okay. I, I'm giving it uh, a nine out of ten uh, as an overall mania. I, I genuinely thought it was one of the strongest manias I've I've seen for a long time, um, and that actually includes the one that you and I were at this time last year. You know, because let's be honest, we went back to the the hotel a little bit crestfallen, didn't didn't we? But it was worth it for this. It, it really, really was worth it. Like that was only one chapter in in this story. That still isn't over, by the way. Because, uh, but anyway, uh, performer. I'm going to give it to Cody because I, how can you give it to anybody else? Um, and match of the night. I'm going with the overbooked schmoz. That was the main event because it was just stupidly fun. Um, you know, you know what I mean. It, it was just so much fun, so good to watch. I can't wait to watch it back comfortable in the knowledge of what of the of what I have now. Um because I didn't know who was winning. I avoided spoilers all I muted every WhatsApp group, every social media, which is why you've not heard from me that much uh over the past 48 hours. But um but yeah so I'm I'm really happy with it. I I I'm not a perfectionist. The, the, these are human beings but in terms of the story being told and for me it's all about the story for me this stuff. Mm. Uh, mm. If you want great fights go and watch UFC wrestling isn't real this is a story um yeah I'm, I'm giving it a nine out of ten uh because i yeah there were there were things they could, they could have done to improve it i'm sure but i i think you know it's as good as, like what more do, what do people want like what 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 is it you want from this like the, this isn't going to this is wrestling this isn't going to make your crush realize she likes you or he likes you this isn't going to solve any your any debt you might have. This isn't going to make the weather improve. This is wrestling. Like, what do people want from it other than to be entertained and a bit of escapism? Um, so I, I do think people need to not be... It's okay to be critical. Like, Dom and I do partly are critical of this stuff uh, for a living. So, y you know, but at the same time, you've got to give things their flowers when they deserve them. And this storyline that's taken place over two years deserves its flowers and i can't wait what they did at this wrestlemania which is really important for me is they set up a ton of storylines going forward many some of them predictable many of them unpredictable and that is why i'm giving it a nine because it entertained yeah. the crap out of me and it laid the foundation for a, 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 as they've been saying all weekend a new era i'm, I'm down yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of a bonus thing. We're going to go until uh, midnight in the UK because I have other things to do next week. Uh, and uh, I, I also want to uh, make a comment based on some comments in the, the chat and also just in general wrestling fans, you know, some of the points that you made there. Sam, I think some people need to, as CM Punk says, go out there and touch some grass, you know, you know. I, think I like that, Mark. Need... I like that, Mark. We're on the same page, mate. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad. Thank, thank you all for your grades. Thank you all for your time <laughs> and energy and joining us today. So I'm going to add a little bonus section. I know this is Dan's job, but we are going to predict. I'm typing it as I say it so you can hear my cool. keyboard clacking. Uh, predict Raw After Mania and future storylines okay so i don't think much is going to happen tonight as much as people think i think we'll maybe get jacob fatu maybe uh you know i could be wrong of course matt hardy would be nice but i doubt it 
Uh, I think the realistic, we, if we're going to get anything, we'll get Jacob, Jacob Batu and a NXT call up. Mm. But in terms of the future, Sam, you talked about storylines being set up. What do you want to see from tonight? What are we building to? What matches are we seeing? What feuds are you looking forward to? And why? Well, I, I, again, I've, like everybody else, I've, um, lost track of who's on what brand because as, as we get closer to WrestleMania, all that falls by the wayside. So I'd like to see um, some baby face promos, maybe from like Sammy, maybe from Cody, of course. I think Cody needs to open the show. I am the guy now. Um, I think we need to see some crowing as, as, as well from the, uh, from the heels who retained, like perhaps Logan. Some of this, by the way, they can save for SmackDown, uh, which I'll be covering right here on Friday. And no, no amount of illness or anything is stopping me this week, I tell you now. Um, so I, I want to see some boasts, some some crowing by the heels. I, I, I like, well, Ricky Stark still works for AW, so, you know, and will do for a while. You know, we're not going to see that, but I should stop getting distracted by the comments. I think we're gonna we're gonna see them start sowing the seeds now for where where this goes next. Um, I think you might be onto something with Jacob for two. I don't know if it's too soon, but they, they could do. Um, it, it's certainly an idea. Uh, I like the idea of Carmelo Hayes coming up. That that that's pretty cool. I don't really know because I think the fracture of the bloodline might need to be something they start teasing now as well. Um, the WrestleMania, the Raw after WrestleMania, you know, I think some people have high expectations for it. Like you, you and I were there in the building last year when Brock started smashing Cody around and we were like, are we shocked because this is shocking or are we shocked because this is shockingly bad? But they eventually paid it off. They did pay it off, um, with Brock basically, you know, testing Cody and, and preparing him for Roman Reigns. So that did go somewhere. So I think there might be a couple of shocking moments. Um, I just don't know what. I, I think my long answer there is, is I don't know. But I, I think they need to sow some seeds in, in yep. Raw tonight. Yeah, let's hope for something good uh, tonight. Obviously, Dan will be right here on the Give Me All Your Hope Wrestling Podcast in just over an hour. So please go and support Dan. He has been on a mammoth three-day streak uh, to get you wrestling content on this channel Mad so lab. thank yes thank uh you dan of course uh and, and and yeah we'll we'll be we'll be back you'll be back on friday i'll be back with with something probably bray <laughs> Wyatt or uncle howdy related yeah. probably uh, yeah, exactly. down down the line and yeah uh thank you all so much for joining us have i missed anything sam is there anything we need to plug or promote yes um, anthony on wrestle uh, on um aw dynamite on wednesday as well um, and, and if you haven't already, watch some of the um, the 2K uh, videos that Ant's been putting out as well because they are fascinating and they are uh, putting our numbers up too. It's great. Um, but yeah, so uh, also, uh, if you don't know already, Dom and I with Andy Spores run WrestleSphere. Um, so you're going to um, watch us interviewing some wrestlers um, and writing some features. You want to know what our, our opinions uh, really, you know, really are. Read, read some of that stuff. Uh, there's more coming. Uh, I, I do have to make some edits to uh, my Ring of Honor feature, Dom. I thought I might um, after Supercard of Honor. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i do that and get that up hopefully this week. Um, but yeah, we've plugged WrestleSphere. We've plugged Give Me A Hole, yeah? Shall we go to bed? <laughs> yeah, I think, we, I think we should. I think we should. I posted a link to the uh, WrestleSphere YouTube that, of course, has the... Uh, the website link, but I'll put yeah. that in there. Please go and support us. We are emerging. We do do, do get to work with WWE, uh, AEW, and uh, Impact Wrestling, TNA Wrestling. So we're very lucky in that respect. So please do support us if you can. And uh, and obviously, uh, we'll be back here on Gimme Hull Year as soon as possible. But it is time to go to bed uh, and join Dan, who will not be going to bed because he's not. We don't all sleep in the same bed, by the way, at least not since LA. Not not uh. since not not <laughs> not since Los Angeles, no. But I'm happy to. I'd be happy to. Um, yes. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what happens for after Mania. I'm sure it'll be great. And don't forget to support Dan. Thank you for watching. I've been Dom. That's that's. Um, uh, yeah. We'll see you later. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now I've got to find the outro. Oh man, okay. it's been a lot.
been a long time. <laughs> you, would you like me to do it? Are you all right? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hold okay, on, guys. Cool. Bye. 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 This is the hardcore legend, Mick Foley. Well, hello and welcome to Give Me a Hall oh, Yeah. I hope everyone there, right there in Yorkshire, is having a nice day. Bang, bang. Have a nice day. Yeah.